Well, let me just open up in a quick word of prayer so we can get into the message this morning. Lord, we just thank you for this opportunity, Lord, to be able to, to share your word, Father God, and uh, give us understanding, open our ears, Lord God, open our hearts, Lord God, to receive your word, Father God. It's not Pastor Miguel's word, it's your word, Father God. Thank you, Father God. Bless this word in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, today's the 1st of September, right? Wow, this year's going by pretty quick, isn't it? Today is the 1st of September. I have a question for all of us. Specifically, if we've been carrying an assemblage of burdens all year long. That's a, that's a question. I have a question for all of us. Specifically, if we have been carrying an assemblage, all sorts of stuff, all sorts of burdens all year long. The question is this, what are we going to do with the rest of the year? What are we going to do the rest of the year? The title of our message is plain and simple, the rest of the year. Are we going to look to rest and finalize the rest of the year carrying the same burdens for the remainder of the year? It's just a question. For all of us. Are we going to find rest the rest of the year with the Lord? I'll say that one more time. Are we going to look and find rest in the Lord for the rest of the year? Just a couple of questions. Some good, profound questions. Amen? I don't know about you... But I believe we all need to find that rest in the Lord. All of us do. All of us do. None of us are super Christians here. We all need to find rest in the Lord. So over the next two weeks, we will be receiving encouragement. We're going to lay our burdens and rest in the faithful arms of our Lord. Amen. His faithful arms are ready for us to lay down all our burdens. Can everybody say all? All our burdens. He's faithful when we come to him. He is faithful when we come to him. I don't know what kind of load you've been carrying all this year, but I, I want to encourage you that you're able to unload that heavy load you're carrying. Amen? Amen. Are you guys with me so far? I want you to understand and I want to encourage you and God is going to encourage us that we can unload this heavy load that you've been maybe carrying all year long. It's time to unload it because the Lord is giving us an invitation. Tell your neighbor an invitation. Tell your neighbor you got an invitation. You have an invitation. See, the Lord has given us this invitation to come to him. If you have been drained, if you've been weakened, if you've been wasted, if you feel like you're beat up, if you feel that you've been, you're exhausted, if you feel that you're dead tired, if you feel that you've, you're spent. And I'm not speaking physically, I'm speaking spiritually. Hello, somebody. I'm speaking spiritually. This invitation that the Lord is going to give us and is giving us we find it in the Gospel of Matthew. It's one of the most comforting verses that opens up with an invitation that is extending us to come to the Lord when we're weary and burdensome. Not physically, but spiritually. So please turn your Bibles over to Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 29 for this invitation. Because the Lord has given us an invitation to find rest and finalize the rest of the years in his arms faithfully. Amen. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30 is going to be our supporting scripture. I'll be reading out of the Amplified Version. Come to me, all who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you rest refreshing your souls with salvation. Amen. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, 
follow me as my disciple. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest. You will find rest. That you is you. That you is us. You, we will find rest. Renewal, bless quiet for your souls. Hallelujah. For your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear and my burden is light. Oh, man, what an invitation, folks. I don't know if you received it. Can, can we give the Lord for a shout of praise for that invitation? That's an invitation. Come to me. Come to me. Folks, this invitation that Jesus offers and has offered for all of us, it's open to all. If you have a Bible, a physical Bible, circle that all. That all is you. That all is us. All who are exhausted. All who are burdened down. Jesus wants you to come to him. Jesus is our caretaker. Jesus is our caregiver. He's called, he is called our burden barrier. Amen. Listen to this formula here. Our, take, our caretaker plus our caregiver equals our burden barrier. Amen. Right up there. That's who he is. He's our caretaker. He's our caregiver. He's our burden barrier. And if you're dealing, if you're dealing something physic, physically in your body, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is your primary care physician. I don't care what your doctor says. I don't care what anybody says. He's your primary care physician. He's going to take care of you. Amen? And you don't need a co-payment either. When you go visit him, when you're on your knees visiting the Lord, he's not going to ask you for a co-payment. I don't know if it's $20 for some of you, $10 for some of us, $30 for some of us. None of that. It's free. We stand. He paid the price. We stand our tallest on our knees. Amen? When we come to the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, for being our caretaker, our caregiver, our primary care physician, our burden barrier. That's who he is. And we're truly blessed because he blesses us daily. And, and, and he allows us to come to him daily at any time with all our burdens. Psalm 68, 19 through 20. From the Amplified Bible, it says, Blessed be the Lord, blessed be the Lord who bears our burdens day by day. The God who is our salvation. God is to us a God of acts of salvation. And to God, the Lord belonged, and, and to God, the Lord belonged, escapes from death, setting us free. He has set us free, folks. We can let go of our burdens daily. We're blessed because of what God allows us to do, to come to him daily. Can you praise God and thank him for being our burden barrier? He's responsible for all your circumstances, all your needs, all your outcomes when we lay them and hand them over to him. But sometimes pride gets in the way and we try to do things on our own. You can't be set free on your own. God is, gonna, is the only one that can set you free. Don't try to hold on to certain things. They're too heavy for you. They're too heavy for us. Let them go. Let them go. Because we're not called to be imprisoned by our heavy burdens and burdens that are weighing us down. That are, that, that these, these burdens that are demanding. These burdens that are unsustainable. And we learn that from, from the scriptures. And we have an understanding that the Pharisees lived that way. That was their culture. The Pharisees we know were an influential uh, religious sect that during Jesus' early ministry, they had these high standards, these religious standards, these cultural expectations that placed a huge burden on people. And they taught all these religious standards and laws, over 600 of them in the first five books of the Bible. They were impossible to keep up. That's religion. That's burdensome. Including the rituals of, of, of ceremonial pur purifications that took place. It was impossible to keep up with all the laws, religion, instead of really keeping up and building a spiritual relationship with Jesus. Hmm. See, the people back then, they were weary. They were tired. They were heavy laden with all this religion and all these demands. They were, moral, they were demoralized trying to keep up. And during Jesus' early ministry, Jesus himself, as he was teaching and ministering, he said that the scribes in Matthew chapter 23, verse 4, listen what Jesus said himself. 
This is what he said himself that the scribes and Pharisees tie up heavy loads that are hard to bear. Heavy, heavy loads that are hard to bear and place them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not lift a finger to make them lighter. Very hypocritical. Unlike Jesus, tell your neighbor, unlike Jesus, unlike Jesus where he loves us and his commands are not burdensome. 1 John chapter 5, 3 says this, that this is love, that, that God loves us so much that if we keep his commands, his commands are not burdensome at all. But he just requires us to keep his commands and his commandments are not burdensome. Think about what he tells us in our supporting scripture. Come to me. Just, just, just come to me. All who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. Think about that. Religious rituals and, and things that burden us, they, they provide no peace. And I will give you rest, refreshing your souls with salvation. We live in a religious world. We do. Life can be so burdensome. We live in a burdensome society. There's pressure all over. There's pressure all over the place, constantly placing burdens and demands. Demands that we try to keep up, but we just can't keep up. These are demands of the world. And these demands of the world are very overwhelming. They're overwhelming. Think about the constant pressure. Think about the constant pressure of this religious world. You have to prioritize your material possessions. You have to have wealth. You have to have social status. You have to have worldly pleasures. This, this, you have to have self-gratification. You have to have world achievements. That place demands on us that keep us weary, purposeless, helpless, and trapped. See, the things of this world become our religion. Because we're trying to keep up with these things. It's not healthy. And the Lord perfectly understands that the burdens of the world and the burdens of sin are not healthy. See, because the burdens of this world, the things of this world, the things of the flesh, the, 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 the sinful nature of us, they cause devastation. That's why God is always inviting us, constantly inviting us daily to come to him. Because he knows. He knows how difficult it is. He knows how overwhelmed we can become. He knows all the burdensome things that we are exposed to. We're exposed to this world. We're exposed to sin. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. We, we clash with those things. But he's constantly inviting us to come to him. That's the love of God. That's his grace. That's his mercy. To come to him. And he demonstrated that at the cross. And he defeated sin. So we can get rest and cast all our burdens on him and rest in him. That's the Savior that we have. Amen? Are you guys good? Amen? That's the Savior that we have. We can find rest in him. Our Savior invites us to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow him. Requiring us, that's going to require us to surrender and follow him. In order to find rest in him. Folks, the only way we can surrender and the only way we can follow him is by coming to him and finding that rest. Letting go. Letting go so you can find rest in him. So you can have salvation. So you're able to be set free and say, I know that the Lord has forgiven me. I don't need to carry my past any longer. I don't need to be dealing with this sin anymore. That's why the Lord says, come to me. That's why he came promising the provision of his father for all our needs. All our needs, including sin, the things that are burdening you. And he wants to give us spiritual refreshment. Folks, I don't know about you, but that's a blessing. It's a good deal. Listen to the promise of Jeremiah 31, 25 quickly. It's not even up there. Listen, just listen to Jeremiah. This is, this is how coming to the Lord will refresh you. How coming to the Lord will just rejuvenate us. 
and we just, just let go and just feel a little bit lighter. Because he says in Jeremiah 31, 25, for I fully satisfy the weary soul and I replenish. I replenish every languishing and sorrowful person. Listen, he will replenish you. If you're thirsty, come to him. Just like a deer pants at the river looking for water. He's got to come to the river. He's got to go somewhere. You can do the same thing so the Lord can replenish you. So the Lord can replenish us. So, so important to come. Just like a deer pants. Going to that river, looking for water, thirsty. You have the same instructions. We have the same instructions. We got to look for Jesus. We got to seek Jesus. Amen. That's some good stuff. They're not that burdensome. Think about the word come. It's not, it's not devastating. Are you guys with me? It's not devastating to come. It's absolutely not. See, the Lord bears all our burdens. And all he wants us is to come. Folks, it's an invitation. It's an invitation for you. And see, you're included. You're included. I'm included. Listen to, let's just listen to the scriptures. And if you're highlighting in your Bible, come to me all, that's all of us, who are weary and heavily burdened by religious rituals that provide no peace. And I will give you all you. Circle those words in your Bible. I will give you rest. You're included. Okay? I will give you rest. Refreshing your souls. That's your soul, my soul, us, we, all of us. Take my yoke upon you. Circle that word you. Once again, you. He's talking about you. It's an invitation. You. It's personal. You. And learn from me. Follow me as my disciples. For I am gentle and humble in heart. And you. Once again, you again. You again. It's personal. It's an invitation. You will find rest, renewed, blessed, quiet for your soul. Your soul. See, you're included. We're all included. For my yoke is easy to bear and burden is light. Wow, we're included. It's a special invitation. We've all received invitations, right? We've all received a special invitation from someone. But there's nothing like this invitation, folks. There's nothing like this invitation. It's an invitation from our compassionate father. Our compassionate father who looks to save us, who looks to encourage us, who looks to love us, who looks to forgive us. To refresh us and invite us to restoration. What an invitation. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Amen. What an invitation. You're included in that invitation. It's the greatest invitation that you will ever receive. It's the greatest invitation that you will ever receive. It's the most comforting invitation that you will ever receive. We've all received invitations. Sometimes we feel so honored when we're invited to a wedding, to a birthday party, to a celebration. You feel honored. Feel honored with this invitation because he's coming and he invites you to encourage you, to love you, to forgive you, to restore you, to refresh you. And he says, come, I invite you to come and lay all your burdens on me. What an invitation, church. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for the invitation, Father. Thank you. Are you excited? This is an exciting invitation. This is an exciting invitation. He's offering us a better way. Rather than placing demands on us, Jesus offers a new life. Amen, Lewis. Amen. He offers a new life. He offers to restore our life. It's a package deal, folks, with no fine print. It's a package deal with no fine print. There are no hidden disclosures. There are no hidden terms. No demands whatsoever. Absolutely. They are very clear. Unlike many other times when we read and sign a document and we later find out that we didn't read the fine print. That's included in the main body of the document. And we say, oh, oh, we should have read the fine print. And when something goes wrong, we realize that we should have read the fine print. Wow. Wow. But I'm here to tell you, and we can praise God that there's no fine prints in the Word of God. There are no fine prints in the Word of God. The Word of God is transparent. It's transparent. That's my wife's favorite word, transparent. Let's be transparent. The Word of God is transparent. When something is transparent, listen to this. When something is transparent, it is distinctively and intentionally seen. It is distinctively 
and intentionally seen. There's no fine print such as this invitation and blessing from the Lord. It is distinctive. It is intentionally seen in the scriptures. Come to me. I will give you rest. I will refresh your soul with salvation. Learn from me. Follow me. I am gentle. I am humble in heart. You will be renewed. You will be blessed. My yoke is easy. My burden is light. There's absolutely no fine print there. It's distinctively and intentionally seen in the word of God. There's no fine print in the word of God. Thank you, Jesus. That we don't have to worry about any fine print. There's absolutely none. When we come to Christ in faith, folks, he gives us rest. He gives us rest. And I'm not talking about physical rest. I'm talking about spiritual rest. He lightens our load with every detail and everything that concerns you, concerns us, concerns the life of us, specifically spiritually. See, the Lord invites us, and he's inviting us to unload our burdens, to unload our sins. Yes, sins. To unload and ask for repentance. Folks, that's, those things, those things can 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 be heavy on us. And the Lord is saying, listen, just unload them. Just unload your past. Just unload something that's a stronghold in your life. Just let it go. Because it's too heavy for you to carry. It's too heavy for us to carry. We all have a load here. Amen. We're all carrying sin. We, we're all sinners. It's heavy to carry. But when you unload, when you repent, and we lay things and give everything to the Lord... It feels good. Repentance is a good thing. It feels really, really good. You are relieved. Amen. Tell your neighbor, you are relieved. You are relieved, folks, that our burden barrier, he's merciful, he's graceful, he's forgiving. Folks, the unloading of disobedience feels good. It's a relief. It's lighter. How many of us travel? Think about when you pack that big suitcase. Hmm. Think about how heavy that suitcase is. Now I want you to think about that suitcase without any wheels whatsoever. And then that you have to carry that suitcase without any wheels, carrying it across the airport, in your car, in your trunk, on the airport, and then when you pick up your luggage, it, 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 just, it just weighs on you. But can we thank God for the person that invented wheels on a suitcase? Think about how easy your load gets. Think about how easy your load gets because of those wheels. I want you to imagine carrying one of your favorite suitcases that's big. Why are the women looking at me like I'm crazy? Because <laughs> you guys just got packed more than we do. <laughs> look, look at these alleys. Uh. Think about taking that suitcase all across, all across Dallas Fort Worth International Airport without any wheels because that airport is a huge airport. It's not one of the largest in the world, but it, it, it extends from one end to the end 2.1 miles. Think about trying to carry that bag. But God is a merciful God. God is a good God. Thank God that God gave the mind to Bernard D. Saddle. Anybody know who Bernard D. Saddle is? He invented the first suitcase with wheels in 1970. That's not long ago. Think about how heavy we used to carry those loads. And in 1970, this guy, while well, believe it or not, you can look it up while working in Puerto Rico, in, in, in Puerto Rico, dishing out uh, uh, suitcases, he came up with the idea of putting wheels on a suitcase. As a result of that, it became a phenomenal idea that in 1972, Macy sold us for a suitcase. Thank God for this man who said, you know what? I, I, I think people can carry a, a lighter load with these wheels. Figuratively speaking, the Lord does the same for us. The Lord does the same for us. He wants to take that heavy burden and heavy load off your life. 
He wants it to make it easier for you to walk with him. He's not going to give you any wheels, but he's going to give you the Holy Spirit that will allow you to walk in the Spirit with him. So you're not going to need wheels. You're going to need the Holy Spirit. Because when you're walking with him, when you're obedient with him, when you're paying attention to the Holy Spirit as he leads you, you're walking. That heavy burden is lightened, folks. It's lightened. But we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility. And that responsibility is not that bad. Because it comes back to that word come. Just come to me. That's our responsibility. Is it that difficult? Come. Come. It's our responsibility to come to the Lord. And coming to the Lord should not be this heavy burden. It shouldn't create anxiety coming to the Lord. His invitations are simple. To come to him. That's it. Coming to the Lord brings relief. It's a place of rest. And it's a place where it's our responsibility to completely surrender our lives to the Lord. Makes it much, much easier. See, the Lord is available to all of us. And for those who are willing and desire to come to him. You can't tell somebody else to take your load and present it to Jesus. You can't. You got to do it. It's you and the Lord. It's personal. It's a personal thing. He's the only one that can unload that burden that you and I carry at times. He is the only one. And there are no prerequisites to come to him. He tells us, come to me. And he includes all who are weary and heavily burdened. Which means that Jesus doesn't place standards for us to follow him. He places simple commands to come to him and obey him. That's it. 1 John 5, 3 says, for this is the love of God, that if we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not burdensome. You just got to keep them. They're not going to be burdensome. That's good news for us. Amen. It's good news for us because it changes everything. It changes everything if we're obedient and responsible with the invitation. Amen. But you're going to have to show up. You're going to have to show up. You're going to have to come to him. And he gives us, in verse 29 of our supporting scripture, he gives us this responsibility. Take my yoke upon you. This is our responsibility. Learn from me. Follow me. Follow me as my disciples. This coming is not that difficult. These commands are tailor-made for us. Anybody ever get anything tailored? It fits just right. It fits perfect. These commands are perfectly tailor-made for us. And I need you to tell your neighbor, they are doable. Is that a word, doable? Doable? They are doable. Folks, these commands are doable. Learn from me. Follow me. Follow the Lord as my disciples. And when we do that, and the things of the Lord are simple, they're doable, we find salvation, we find peace, we find rest, and we find oh, relief. We find that relief upon casting out our burdens into the Lord. But sometimes, but sometimes pride kicks in the way. I need some holy water. That felt good. So, once we cast these burdens onto the Lord, it brings relief. But something has to be released so we can experience that relief. Does that make sense? Something has to be released so we can receive that relief relief and experience that relief when something is burdening us including sin including everything in our lives right it needs to be released when it's released there's a relief you relieve the pain 
you relieve anxiety, you relieve that oppression and depression because you've released it. But there has to be a release. And when that release takes place, a change takes place. That only comes from the Lord. That change takes place once you release it. It feels better. There's a relief. No more anxiety. No more stress. Psalms 555.22 says, cast your burden on the Lord. Release it. And he will sustain and uphold you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken, slip, fall, or fail. Is that scripture up there? Psalms 55. I'll read it to you one more time. I don't know if it's up there. But it says that cast your burden on the Lord. And in the Amplified Version it says release it. Release it and he will sustain you. And he will uphold you. He will never allow the righteous to be shaken, slip, fall away. The Lord is with us. He's not going to allow you to slip, fall. He wants you. It's an invitation. Come to me. We're called, folks, to cast and release. We're called to cast and release all our burdens. However, it's an individual responsibility. No one else can do it for you. No one else can do it for you. You just got to let it go. You just got to let it go. Give it to the Lord. No one else can do it for you. It's a good place to be. First Peter 5, 7 quickly says, casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, on him, for he cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you carefully. He says, cast all. One, two, three, four, four times, five, five times. Cast all. That means all, everything, todo. Give it to the Lord. It's okay. It doesn't make you weak, okay? It doesn't make you weak. Because surrendering is a sign of victory when you let it all go. And I want to encourage you today to place everything on God's shoulders. Whatever is weighing you down, I don't know, but God does. Can I tell you something? Don't idolize your burdens. Don't idolize them. Release them to the Lord, and he will take care of them. Media team, as I prepare to close, I want you guys to be encouraged, man. This is a great invitation that the Lord has given us. A beautiful invitation. It's so quiet in this room, you can't even hear a pin drop. Oh, man. I, I, I love this translation of our supporting scripture from the Message Bible. I believe it's up there. It says the following. Are you tired? Are you tired? Worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me. Get away with me and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. And he's not talking about a vacation down in Cancun. He's talking about a real rest in his presence. And I, it's, that's not up there. This is just the spirit of God's just speaking to us. I will show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforth rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. And you will learn to live freely and lightly. I need you to stand with me. I started 25 minutes ago and posed a question for us specifically if we've been carrying a whole bunch of stuff and assemblage of burdens all year long. And the question that I posed to you was this, what are you going to do? What are we going to do for the rest of this year? Are we going to rest and finalize the rest of the year carrying the same burdens over the remainder of the year i pray that in your heart 
in your mind, the answer is absolutely not. After receiving this amazing comfort and invitation from the Lord, that saying, come to me. That's all he says, come to me. And he's simply waiting for us to respond. He's waiting for us to respond. Do you know the word? Do you know the word come in the dictionary is defined to approach or move toward a particular person? Dictionary.com. Listen, listen to me, listen to me. I, I, I hope you get this. The word come is defined to approach or move toward a particular person. The Lord is saying to you to come. He's very specific. He is faithful. He is genuine. And he's waiting for us to come to his faithful arms. But it's going to be our responsibility to come and approach him. Remember that definition of coming. To come. To approach or to come towards a particular person. And there are four approaches to come and to cast your burdens on the Lord. Number one. Admit that we are burdened. You have to admit that. We're all burdened with something. You have to admit it. What's weighing you down? Hebrews 12, 1, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely. Let us lie aside what's weighing you down. Number two, hear his words. John 5, 24 says, I, simply, I, say, I say empathetically that anyone who listens to my message and believes in God who sent me has eternal life and will never be damned for his sins but has already passed out, passed out of death into life. Do you believe the message that you've received today? Do you believe this message to come? And the third thing that you need and we need to do is to approach and cast our burdens to the Lord is to believe. Believe what he promises. Psalms 56.10 says, I praise God for what he has promised. I praise God for what he has promised. Yes, I praise the Lord for what he has promised. Believe his promises. Believe that you can come to him. Believe that you can lay down this heavy burden that's, that's been struggling and weighing you down. And the fourth is release your burdens to the Lord. Do not be anxious or worried about anything. Philippians 4, 6, and 7. But in everything, in every circumstance, in every situation, by prayer and petition, just in thanksgiving, just give it to the Lord. Release it to the Lord. And the peace that surpasses all understanding will start hovering all over your life. That's all it takes. God is not that difficult. He says, come to me. Admit that we are burdened. Hear his words. Believe and release. That's the invitation from the Lord. I don't care what kind of invitation you'll be getting in the next lifetime. There is no greater invitation than what we just heard today. Can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Amen. I want to invite the prayer partners to come up. And just because the prayer partners are coming up doesn't mean that People are going to look at you and say, he must be carrying something. He must be in sin. He must be dealing with something. Listen, before the service, I was on my knees. Amen. Right here. The pulpit. We're all going through stuff. Don't leave without the prayer partners praying for you. It could be something totally different. It could be prayer for your health. It could be prayer for your finance. It could be, I, I, I don't know. But if you have a need, don't leave without someone praying for you. Because we love to pray. Amen. 
I want to close in a word of prayer. Lord, we thankful, Father God, for this amazing invitation that you've given us, Lord God. Lord God, this, uh, this excitement, Father God, knowing that we can come to you. Lord God, that we can admit our burdens, Father God, to you, Father God. That we can hear your message, Father God, and simply apply them, Father God, and be doers of your word, Father God. That, Lord, that we can believe and we can release, Lord God, all things to you, Father God. Giving us relief, Lord God, that, you don't, that we don't have to carry any longer, Father God, because you've set us free, Father God. Lord, it's our responsibility to come to you, Father God. And it's free and it's an invitation that only you can give, Father God, to give us that peace that we need and that relief to refresh us, to renew us, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, Father God. Bless us for the rest of this week, Lord God. Continue, Lord God, uh, doing your work in us and through us, Lord God, and through this church and this community, Father God. We love you and we're thankful for the word that was spoken here today, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen and amen. God bless you guys. Give the Lord a shout of praise. Amen.